Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover handling simple JWT auth with fast API. The first thing to do is to install our dependencies. We have fast API, which is the framework we're using and Uvicorn, which we're going to use to run our app. PyJWT is a library for encoding and decoding JWTs and Passlib is a password hashing library. So I'm not storing any passwords in plain text and bcrypt is the hashing algorithm I'm using with it. I'm having to put quotes around bcrypt because I'm using the ZSH shell, which uses square brackets for pattern matching. Then I'm going to freeze out the requirements to make it easier to install next time. Now that's done, we'll create our main.py file. I'm just going to create the app and set up our routes, but they'll do nothing right now. So I've imported fast API and created an app I've also created an empty list of users for us to use later. Next, I'm adding two post routes for register and login. And then I'm adding two get routes to highlight things working. Unprotected will return hello world to anybody, while the protected route will be updated later to check for our token. Now I'm going to create an auth.py file to hold our auth logic that the endpoints will use. So we'll need to set up our dependencies. JWT is the PI JWT library we added for encoding and decoding tokens. We want HTTP exception, security, HTTP authorization credentials, and HTTP bearer from FastAPI. The exception will be used to raise errors for invalid tokens, which the framework handles to return an error to the user with the provided status code and error message. Security is used for dependency injection and will highlight routes that require authorization headers in the Swagger UI and provide a way to enter a bearer token there. HTTP bearer is going to be used as part of the dependency injection to ensure a valid auth header has been provided when calling the endpoint. And HTTP authorization credentials is the object type that will be returned from that dependency injection. Next, we want to import crypto context from Pathlib this will be used to create a context for hashing and validating passwords. And finally, we want to import date time and time delta. These will be used for setting the issue and expiry times of the JWT. I'm going to create a class called auth handler. Here I've created instances of some of our imports to use in the class functions, and I've added a very secure secret to encode our JWTs with. The class is going to have five functions. The first is a function to get a hashed password value. This will take in a plain text password and return the hash using our crypto context. Next, I want to add verify password. This will take in a plain text password and a hashed password as parameters and will return a boolean to indicate whether or not the values match. Now we want a function to create a JWT. This will accept the user ID as a parameter, which I'll use as the subject of the token. We use the imported date, time and time delta to set the expiry and issue that times. I'm setting the expiry time to be just five minutes here to make it easier to demonstrate, but you'll likely want to change this time span to fit your use case. Then we encode the token using our secret and return that. Next is the decode token function. Here we take the token in as a parameter and attempt to decode it using our super complex secret. Then I'm returning the subject for the token, the username in my case. If there are errors decoding the token, HTTP exceptions will be raised with information on why and will return a 401 unauthorized status code. The final function I want to add is our dependency injection wrapper for auth. We're using the HTTP bearer through dependency injection, which will be added to our roots. This ensures that a bearer token has been supplied in the auth header, but doesn't do anything to validate that token. So this will wrap that, first ensuring the token is present, and if it passes that check, then we'll decode the token ourselves to make sure it's valid. Now, before the roots are fully implemented, I'm going to want to create a schema to serialize the login and registration data. This is a simple schema, which just says that we're expecting both username and password values to be provided as strings. 
With that done, we can go back to our main file and start implementing our endpoints. First, I'm updating the imports. We're adding depends, so we can use dependency injection for our auth wrapper and HTTP exception in case any of the checks in our endpoints fail, so we can easily return the correct status codes to the user. And we're using the auth handler and auth detail schema we just created. We then want to create an instance of the auth handler to use in our endpoints. The first endpoint to implement is the register function. So we update the function to return a 201 status code, since this will create a user in our list, and we'll be expecting our schema object to be passed in as a parameter for the request. We then want to check if the user that is attempting to register is already in our list. This prevents us checking provider passwords against the wrong username. If the name is taken, we'll raise a bad request. Then we're going to use the auth handler to get a hashed password and we'll store the username and hash password in the list. We're not returning anything, but the status code will indicate it was a success. Next up is the login endpoint. Again, we're updating it to expect an object match in the schema to come through in the post request. And again, we want to check to see if the user exists in the list. However, this time we want to retrieve the value so that we can get the hashed password. Then we check, and if a user wasn't found, or the user was found but there's a password mismatch, we can return a 401 unauthorized informing the user there's a problem. Otherwise, we can create and return a token to the user. The unprotected endpoint won't change, so we can now guard our protected endpoint. Here, we're adding a dependency on our auth wrapper. So that will be called when the endpoint is hit, ensuring that a token has been passed in and that the token is valid. If it passes those checks, we'll simply return the name so that we know it was successful. Now we can run our API and ensure there are no errors. And we can use curl to make some requests and see the behavior. So first we can call the unprotected endpoint and see that we get the hello world response. Now if we make the same kind of request to the protected endpoint, we can see that we get a not authenticated error returned and a 403 forbidden status code. This is the error generated by the HTTP bearer provided by FastAPI. So let's register a user so we can test the rest of the logic. I'm creating a user with the name Ian and a complex password of secret password. And from the output, you can see we got no errors and the 201 created status code was returned. If we run that again with the same data, we can see that we get a 400 bad request status returned and we get a message saying the username is already taken. So now we have a registered user, we can log in and get a token. And we can see we got a valid response and that it contained our token. If we copy that token and use it as an authorization header, we can now hit our protected endpoint and get a valid response. We can also check that modifying the token stops us from successfully hitting the endpoint, so I'll use the same request and just change part of the token. We can see that we got a 401 response with the message, invalid token. The last thing to check is that we're stopped when the token has expired, so I'll fast forward a few minutes until that's definitely happened. Okay, so if I now resend the valid token, it will now have expired. And we can see the 401 response with the message that the signature has expired. And that's it, we have a fast API app with some basic JWT auth added. If anything was unclear, please drop a comment below and I'll try to help out, or check out the GitHub link in the description. Thanks for watching.